Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to an episode of Great Locks. I'm Gunther the Great, and today I'm gonna to be repairing a damaged dreadlock. This is something that I've done before on myself, but now that I don't have dreadlocks, I don't ever have damaged dreadlocks because obviously I don't have any on myself. But you know my boy Activerse. If you don't know him already, go subscribe to his YouTube channel. It is Activerse on YouTube. But today I'm actually going to be repairing one of his dreadlocks that I actually damaged myself. Yeah, that's right. I damaged it myself, guys. Um, I cut his hair and um, I always cut his hair. And this time I nicked one of his dreads. And yeah, I'm not super proud of that. But hey, I'm super glad that I'm able to actually repair it. And I'm going to walk you guys through the process. So this is actually great for you guys to learn from my mistakes. So if you guys noticed, there was a kind of a ball sticking out of his dread. That was actually just a piece of his dread that was cut at the base. And what I'm going to be doing is allowing the base of his hair to grow back. So I'm not going to keep on cutting where I made that first mistake. You can see under my finger where that extra hair was kind of laying. And what I'm doing right here is just pulling in all that hair that was at the root. And then at the same time, pulling in that ball of hair that was sitting outside of the dreadlock so that it doesn't look abnormal and it looks like a normal dread when I'm finished. And what I'm doing right here is actually just tugging on the dreadlock and asking him if there's any single strands of hair that are actually tugging at his scalp because you don't want it to be uncomfortable after repairing the dread. But you can see just with literally maybe a minute of crochet needling, you can see that I pulled in the root and also pulled in that hair that was sticking out that little ball of hair you know i pulled all that in so that's it's really simple how to actually repair a dreadlock all it takes is a crochet needle especially in this case with me you know cutting the base of the dread which you never want to do but you can always repair it with letting that original hair grow back in and then pulling that in with the crochet needle so you never want to keep hitting that piece of hair that you cut originally say you go to the barber shop and then they accidentally cut into your dread if you want to 100 percent repair that dreadlock you have to allow that hair to grow back in it's going to look awkward at first that's why his hair was um it looked like he was woofing for close to a month maybe over a month but he's been letting his hair grow and what that did was allowed his roots to grow out to be able to be pulled back into that actual dreadlock But if you have any more questions about this, definitely drop them down below and I can definitely get back to you guys because it, it may seem complicated, but it is really simple once you get the hang of it. And if you've ever used the crochet needle, you'll know that this is really simple. And I mean, all it takes is trying it. And even if you have to try it on yourself or try it on a friend who has dreads and they have a damaged dreadlock, because the biggest thing is, is if it's damaged, you can go back in there and fix it with nothing to lose. Basically, you can't damage it even more if you know what you're doing. But besides that, like I said, drop a comment down below if you have any more questions. I actually gave him a high top fade and kind of dropped it a little bit on the front to kind of emphasize his hairline. And then, um, yeah, I just went through the process of cutting his hair, what I always do. Sometimes I'll do a drop fade on him, but I like the high top fade on him a little bit better. And he likes it as well. That's what he asked for this time. But just went through the process that I always do. Did a bald line, then bald it out the bottom, and then went in with the lever open, went up about an inch. Sometimes I go about a quarter of an inch, and then, or I'd say three quarters of an inch, and then um, flicking out at the top as well and then after that I kind of just blend everything together I took all the bulk down by using a two guard and then also I went down with a one guard closed and then after taking out all the bulk I like I said, just started blending it in. And all I do is just kind of go back and forth between different guards and then also playing with the lever just to make sure that it looks good because everyone's hair is going to be different. Everyone's head's going to be different. So when cutting hair, um, you kind of just want to do what looks best, not always go by a structured, you know, one, two, three process. It's best just to go around and see what looks best on your client or just the person's hair who you're cutting. And 
cutting hair is something that I was not good at all at first, but it just took me trying it and then keep on practicing. Like I, I would still say that I'm still practicing. Obviously I'm not the best that I could possibly be, but practice does make perfect. And I just constantly always practice. And I feel like this haircut turned out really good. One of my best haircuts. Obviously there are some spots that people call me out on that have a better eye than I do, but building up my eyes, what I would call it, is actually learning how to see what this would look like. But you guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you didn't give it a thumbs up, other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.